Why are you here? Be gone, Phantom. Be gone and leave me to my slumber. Then... then this isn't a dream. You really are here. But why? The Prophet dies when the Emperor leaves him. This is the course of the game. It has always been so. Explain yourself. How did you find this place? And why do you still exist? Her? But why? She does not have a mind. She does not have feelings. So why should she do this? But... Still you speak the truth. I can feel it. Then could it really be... ...that the unlikeliest of all eventualities... ...has become reality and... ...brought you here? Coincidence... ...or caprice, I do not know. The Veiled Woman cannot be understood. <sighs> I am sorry. It's been too long since I have spoken to anyone. I have had many names. The Arkarians called me the God of Death. The Moonskin people, the Warden of Dreams. The Pyreans, the Demon of the Deep. For your people I am, or, or was, the Black Guardian. Pompous names, I know. However, I am none of these, neither god nor demon. I am only an eye, condemned to observe again and again. As you measure time, older than your most daring chronicles go back, by far. I have seen them all, since our people fell. Every civilization, every cleansing, every turn of the cycle. What? No. The Starlings came long after me. I was only a fool who wanted to save his own skin at any cost. I knew the cleansing would come. I had known it long before the Red Madness and the war started. But I also knew that fighting it as my people did, and as most do, was pointless. So I looked for another way to prevail. And I found it. Uh, what you see here is the result. The Goliath. As I liked to call it back then. What is it? My self-dug grave. What it was meant to be was a body of steel, an immortal machine with which I planned to merge my consciousness. Only organic life could be reaped by the High Ones, and I thought that by becoming a machine, I, I could fool them. By the name of the sun, how Brilliant, I thought myself. I wanted to become a god, laughing in the face of time. But let me spare you my self-pity. What happened, happened. No. Joining the Goliath meant immortality. All I had to do was sleep and awaken once more when the cycle started again and new life came forth. Except that this new life would not have been defenseless. I would have been a true god to them, one capable of protecting them from the High Ones. No imaginary figure like the Creator, no false gods like the Lightborn were, to speak in your language. As the only one of my people? Yes. But it happened faster than it should have. 
And when the cleansing occurred, the Goliath was not yet finished. And as the Emperor unleashed the light, I had no choice but to complete the joining too early. A fatal error, as it turned out. I did survive, yes. But I am trapped inside this unfinished machine. And ever since then, all I can do is watch. Again and again. Yes, but a part of the Goliath is the eye. It allows me to see what happens on the surface everywhere. Not as literal as you imagine, of course. I see schemes, feel emotions, similar to your gift, to the Echo. But they are enough to understand. Yes, it was not how I planned it. The Goliath in its final form was meant to be divine, a synthesis of man and steel. But I overestimated myself, and I acted too quickly, driven by fear. No, no, you do not understand. You are stumbling through the fog, even now that it is almost over. By themselves, the High Ones are not the problem. If we would just see them as they really are, they would become powerless. Yes, it is hard to put into words. I myself do not know everything about the High Ones. Only that they are part of something we call the Cycle. A civilization arises and blossoms and then, always at the same stage of their development, the High Ones appear. And with them, the Red Madness. People start losing their minds. Wars erupt and chaos rules. Until two or three years later, the cleansing happens. The moment when the High Ones devour the collective consciousness, the gathered minds of this civilization, to give birth to a new one of their own. Despite all of this, nobody knows what drives them. Perhaps they act out of malice, out of an urge to survive, Perhaps they do not even have a wheel of their own, but are like a force of nature. But I do know one thing, as powerful as they might be, it is mankind who gives them that power. We make them into what they are, because what nobody understands is simply this. The High Ones feed on what humanity has the most of, their ego, greed. Pride, fear, and their everlasting search for an enemy who is responsible for all their misery. It is those traits the High Ones make use of. These characteristics are what make us human. And by themselves, they are harmless. Only when we bury them, when we deny them, then they play into the High Ones' hands. So why is this, you ask? It is simple. The High Ones alone cannot make the cleansing happen. Only a human can. With the beacon. My knowledge about it is as limited as my knowledge about the cycle. It has existed since the beginning of time. And despite what you might now believe, the ancient writings about it are true. Lit by the ones who carry the Numenos, it can banish the High Ones once and for all. But it can also destroy us. Because what happens when it is lit without a core is far more than an explosion. It is the cleansing, the triumph of the High Ones. And even as 
as we speak, a human, Tia Laura Rintiol, has done it again. A bright light will appear from the heart of the machine and open a hole in the sky. And within hours, it will spread throughout the world and they will all feel it. A fire that burns them from within. A white light which will break through their flesh. Do you understand now? The High Ones have no power. All they do is to feed on our weaknesses, manipulate us into bringing about our own destruction. It is we who forge the sword that kills us, we who lead them to their victory. Even though the key to salvation has always been in our hands, but instead of realizing our folly, we make the same mistake. We repeat the same fate over and over, and only because we refuse to see the truth. Yes, the High Ones are our enemy, but who wants to hear that it is our ego, that dark voice within us, that empowers them? It is so ironic. The moment we would realize all this would be the moment it all came to an end. But we do not. They reap, we sow. Dreams, thoughts, visions, they are everywhere. But the principle is always the same. They throw a tainted seed into a fertile ground. The rest happens by itself. Like a thousand others before him, the High Ones knew exactly what they had to do to get him to commit this last act of desperation. They played him with his weaknesses and fears, like a figure on a chessboard. And the saddest part is that until the very end, he will believe that he has done something good. That was his greatest fear, yes, to be remembered as a failure, a broken man. That was the stream the High Ones manipulated him from the moment he died, after attempting to flee from his prison on Nerim. The real Arinthial, he is dead, Prophetess. He is a fleshless one. One of the mightiest tools of the High Ones. Just as you are. <sighs> I wish it were. The methods of how the High Ones influence us are plentiful. And the red madness and their ability to enter our dreams are not their only means. Their mightiest tool is the creation of... Projections, fleshless ones, or emissaries, as they are also called. If a person dies, and if this person has one last unfulfilled wish, a compulsion, then the High Ones have the power to create a projection of him, an immaterial image of the deceased, which thinks itself real and is perceived as such. What no one notices, not even the projection itself, are two things. Firstly, it is driven by this last unfulfilled desire. Secondly, it becomes an idealized version of its former self, almost tailor-made to free itself from the last compulsion, that ultimate scourge. The daughters of fishermen become warriors. Broken generals become charismatic and driven leaders who seem 
almost too determined to be real. You are one of these projections, as are all of the emissaries. You are a fleshless one, a spirit searching for liberation from something. I do not know your past before you came to this land, because before you became the prophetess, you were insignificant. But what happened to you and your friend on that ship? You never survived it. You drowned in the Red Sea. And in that very moment, the High Ones entered your mind and made you into what you are today. And other than myself, the High Ones knew your compulsion, knew the desire that drove you. Whatever it was, it made you predictable, and it allowed them to play you, just as they played Arunthiol and Korak. Do you see it now? Every dream the High Ones sent you, every time they appeared to you, they all had but a single purpose. To feed your self-image. To push you in a certain direction. They wanted you to play the game for their purposes. And they succeeded. You read the echo of the future as other prophets did before you. You helped Arinthiol reconstruct the beacon and led him to the Numinos. When he saw that it would be taken away from him at the very last instant, his fear of failure led him into doing what he did. You are not to blame, Prophetess. You did what countless others did before you, and you did it because you thought it was the right thing to do. Only one thing is different. In all the time I have been here, never before did a projection realize its own nature. You were meant to dissolve like the rest of mankind. Yet, here you stand, and I tell you the truth. This was never meant to happen. Regardless of how long your power can protect you from the light of the cleansing, eventually you will dissolve too. Even if... Wait. No. Maybe. Maybe you are right. Maybe there is a way. But... No. It would be pointless. Forgive me, I... I have to think. Yes, there could be a way. What I told you is true. Here on Earth, you would not survive the cleansing. But there is one place where you could. The Star City. I know that you brought something back from your journey there. The escape pods. And I know that they can also take you back there, for I have seen the Yalam Rashe, the ancient starvings, do so. Whatever has protected the city over all these millennia, it would protect you too. Yes, you could survive it. By the face of time, you could. No, no it would not. But that is irrelevant. You are fleshless, a projection. And just like me, time cannot touch you. Age cannot kill you. And thus you could succeed where I have failed. You could wait for the cleansing to be over. And then, create a new humanity. Create a new humanity. 
It is only a matter of time until the new turn of the cycle starts. New life will come forth. First, simple life, then human. And just like the civilizations before them, they will also fall victim to the High Ones because they will have the same weaknesses as we do. But not with your help. You could be a god to them. You could guide their ascent. You could shape a mankind free of egos and weaknesses. And by doing so, you would deprive the High Ones of their power. Just imagine, in this new world, there would be no need for a beacon, because the High Ones simply would not have any strings to pull on. Mankind will defeat them by becoming superior. I... it... it means a lot to me to hear you say that. What is important now is that we act quickly. The cleansing is already happening, and you will not have much time left to flee. You must go through the portal and then back to the temple. Then you have to activate the pods, and the rest will happen automatically. When all this is over, I will try to reach out to you. She is. I'm sorry, but this is one more reason why you have to do the right thing. Please, make her death matter. Yes, and hurry. You will feel the light as soon as you are back on the surface. And given time, it will consume you. But you will succeed. I feel it. Ah, there is one more thing I need to ask of you, however. One final request. I want you to shut me down. Yes. I want to finally rest. Please do not try to convince me to do otherwise. All that. I do not want to be a part of it any longer. I have not wanted to for a long, long time. Please, do it. The switch is in front of you. That was how I connected myself to the Goliath. It will cut the connection as well. Do it, and then go. Go and fulfill your fate. So worried when <laughs> miserable fool! I would have kept my word, but if you want to play games, fine. I have had enough time to practice. Oh, Kirash! 
The generators now. Generators. Now, 
Attack the generators! <laughs> No! No! What have you done? 